I didn't land a traditional software engineering internship this summer, but I've never been more productive. It's no secret that the tech industry is insanely competitive right now, and it's extremely difficult to get internships. I applied to dozens over the past school year, but nothing stuck. There may have been multiple reasons for this. For one, it was my sophomore year, and most internships are tar targeted towards juniors. Also, I didn't have a lot of projects under my belt at the time. And it probably doesn't help that I go to a pretty small school, not one of the top schools that all of the companies are competing for and looking for. So, no internship this summer. But that just meant I had the freedom to fill my schedule with other opportunities and projects I wanted to work on. The key I've found is to go out of your way to find valuable experiences and opportunities in low competition areas, places other people aren't flocking to in droves like big tech internships. So this summer I've been working on four different dev projects. The first one is a fitness mobile app aimed at mobility and flexibility. Back in winter of last year, I wanted to meet some new people at my university who were doing cool things. And I realized that the majority of students who were actually having cool ideas and going through on those ideas were the business students, not other CS students. So I went to a business event. And at this event, I met some people who were working on this fitness regimen. And as part of the project, they wanted an app. And I was like, well, I have some experience with Flutter. Maybe I could build you an app. And so I joined the entrepreneurship club and I've been working on this project with them. And it's been really great working with these guys. It's given me some really valuable experience working with non-technical collaborators and translating business ideas into things I can actually do as a developer. And this is something really important once you go into the field and are start working on real projects with other people. A lot of your collaborators are not gonna be technical and you need to learn how to communicate with them and work together. So the second project I'm working on is Lensly. Lensly is an iOS app that helps users keep track of their contact lenses. So I personally wear two-week contact lenses and I used to write down the date that I would change it on my phone, but I kept losing track of it. Either I was forgetting to write down the date or you know it was late at night and I just did not want to go search through my notes to see if it was time and constantly have to do math in my head to see if it's time yet, open the calendar and everything. And as a result, I was wasting a lot of contact lenses because I was like, well, it's probably close enough. I'm just going to throw it out. And then, you know, over time it builds up and it wastes a lot of lenses and a lot of money. And overall, it was just not a good experience for me. So I decided to build this app to solve my problem. It quickly shows me a visual of how much time I have until I need to change my contact lenses. It gives me a calendar that I can look at without needing to do any math in my head. And I even added a feature to keep track of my stock and see when I need to buy more. I did have a lot of experience building apps with Flutter before, but I was stocking out job descriptions for jobs I might potentially want to do in the future, some mobile development roles, and most of them want native framework experience. And even if they do want cross-platform experience like Flutter, it would be secondary. So. I decided that this summer, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to teach myself Swift UI. And I thought, what better app to start with than a contact lens tracker? It's a pretty simple app, no accounts, no network calls, no backend, just some UI and local storage. I did follow a few tutorials first and work through some example apps, but between that and working on Lensly, it took me about a month from zero Swift UI knowledge to live on the App Store. Granted, this is with prior experience with Flutter. A lot of things translated pretty well to Swift UI, so I would say that really gave me a leg up with learning a new mobile framework. But yeah, I did get it published on the App Store last week, so now I'm just working on some more features. Now, the third project I'm working on has a bit of a backstory. So over the past school year, I've been working on a tank monitoring web app using Flutter. This is a project I was approached to by one of my CS professors during my freshman year, actually. Um, and this was a cross-departmental project that aimed to make ocean acidification research tools more accessible for researchers because the commercially available tools are pretty cost prohibitive. And so the project centers around making some open source software and hardware to allow researchers to conduct research on ocean acidification. What they didn't have was an app to monitor 
data from the aquarium tanks. So I was kind of working under the mentorship of this professor to make a web app that displays the temperature and pH of the tanks in a real-time graph. If you'd like to know more about the Open Acidification Project, I'll drop a link in the description. But if you are a student of CS or a related field, I highly, highly recommend working on some sort of project under the mentorship of a professor because I learned more on that project than all of my classes combined. And working on projects in general is really helpful, but when you have a mentor added on top of that, that just blows it out of the water. Anytime one of my freshman CS friends asks me for advice, this is the number one piece of advice I give is find a project to work on with a professor. So over the year of working with this professor, uh, we built up a relationship and he approached me for this summer with a very similar project for his company for a, a, another Flutter web app, monitoring and build test results. They currently had a, a Java app tool that was 20 years old and nobody was maintaining it anymore and he wanted some new features. So he wanted me to rewrite it in Flutter and add some new features. So previously I had worked on the Tank Monitor app for free, but I think my professor got really tired of my old laptop always crapping out during our meetings. And so for this project, we agreed that he would give me his old MacBook that he had just upgraded from. And this was actually a win-win for me because I had been considering getting a MacBook as a lifelong Windows user because I wanted to start learning how to make iOS apps in Swift and you need a Mac for that. But I genuinely enjoy working with this professor and building software and I learn a lot on these projects. So I just see the MacBook as a free cherry on top, not really as a, you know, fair or unfair compensation. So then the fourth project that I'm working on is a medical administration record simulation. This is um, a custom software built by students from the CS department and being used by the nursing department at my school. So this was already working and in production. I was approached by another one of the CS professors to work on it. Um, they just wanted some more features to clean it up. And this one I do get paid for hourly because this is an alternative to the nursing department buying a commercial product. So they do pay the CS department to build it. So that's been great. Um, again, I love working on software and getting paid for it is, you know, the next step. So apart from doing projects, I'm also working at my university's IT help desk this summer. This is my nine to five. This is what pays my bills. I've been working here for a little over a year. I work part-time during the school year and full-time during the summer. It's mostly answering phone calls, emails, just helping students and faculty with technical issues or just tech maintenance in general. The thing I really like about this job though is that there is a lot of downtime. We do get some busy spells, um, but there's a lot of sitting around and waiting for requests. And most of my coworkers spend that time, you know, casually gaming or scrolling or chatting. I like to use that time to du double up on doing other things, such as uh, the projects I mentioned. And so this is a win-win situation for me, and I feel really grateful that I'm able to have this job as opposed to, you know, working eight hours a day at a retail job, coming home tired and not having the energy to work on the projects to further my career and do the things I love. So if you need a job and you can get some sort of job where it just basically requires you to be there and be available, huge, huge advantage. Then also I'm working on leak code, obviously. Um, currently I'm working on learning all the patterns and just staying consistent with my practices. I might be posting some videos, leak code with me in the future, if that's something that would be interesting to people. I'm also applying for internships for next year. Uh, I'm working on polishing my resume. I've been attending webinars and info sessions from different companies over the last month. Just, you know, getting some information and getting my name out there a little bit, hopefully. I've also been keeping an eye on some GitHub repos that show what internships open up and trying to apply to them as soon as they open up. I will link the ones I use in the description for you guys. I also follow Zero to Sudo's Instagram. He posts a lot about internships opening up and direct consideration programs. Um, this is not sponsored. He does not know who I am. I've just found his account super helpful for job search. And of course, um, I've been working on this channel. 
with all the things I've been working on, I thought, why not share the journey? And it's been a really fun way to reflect on what I've been building and hopefully inspire some of you to take advantage of the time and the opportunities you have, even if they don't look like the traditional path. It's because an internship is not the only way to grow. It is not the end of the world if you don't get an internship. Start a project, contribute to open source, learn a new framework, ask for mentorship, be creative. Think outside the box about what opportunities and advantages you have. Even just time on your hands is a resource you can use. And obviously, don't give up. Learn from your failures and keep going. Me not getting an internship this year was a signal for me that I needed to put more work in this year and that's part of what I'm doing. Getting rejected sucks, but it does not define your potential. Your summer can still be valuable even if it doesn't come with a fancy title. So if you're in the same boat, feel free to drop a comment or subscribe. We're figuring this out together. And if this is your first time here, welcome. I'm a CS student sharing my journey, building software projects, and working towards becoming a software engineer. So if that sounds interesting, feel free to stick around.